Roger Penrose has proposed that the universe, the cycle from that the universe cycles from one aeon, so to speak, to the next, which is involving a Big Bang followed by an infinite future expansion that eventually results in the next Big Bang, and then seemingly the next Big Bang. Is this way of a is this an adequate scientific model to account for the Big Bang data? but seemingly without a creator? Well, uh, the Penrose uh, cyclic conformal cosmology model is its formal name, the CCC, okay. uh, is one of uh, a couple of newer models that are essentially modifications of the old oscillating universe idea. Um, another one is a model that's been proposed by Paul Steinhardt. Okay. And, um, and it might be helpful just to review the oscillating universe idea because it has certain it. Uh, characteristics and also uh, limitations that have been inherited, I think, by the newer uh, versions of those models. The oscillating universe idea was the idea that the universe expands outward as it is, you know, the, it, it accounts for the observations of an expanding universe. Mm -hmm. Then the idea was that there was enough mass in the universe to cause a recollapse. And then the once the all the matter recollapsed, then there would be another expansion and another contraction ad infinitum. And so, yes, the universe is expanding now, but it's only one expansion out of an infinite number of prior and yet future expansions. So we still have an infinite universe and therefore no need to posit a creator or an external mm -hmm. cause of the universe. Um, the, Oscillating universe ran into two big problems. One, it turns out just observationally, there was not enough matter in the universe, even counting the dark matter, mm. to cause a recollapse. But secondly, uh, and this was shown by Alan Guth, the great MIT physicist in the 1980s, uh, that, there, that with each cycle, there would be a loss of energy available to do work, or another way to put it would be there would be a buildup of entropy of, of highly dispersed, non-ordered um, mass energy that was not capable of doing the same amount of work that drove the expansion in the first place. Okay. So you have this cycling down of energy available to do work or a buildup of entropy with each cycle so that eventually, if the universe had been here for an infinitely long time, we should have already reached a nullifying equilibrium. It would have been like the ball bouncing, 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 and finally yep. just settling to the ground. So, um, so there's a problem of, of entropy, of, of, of specific energy available to do work at the right time in the right place. Now, the Penrose model is different in that it doesn't see an infinite number of cycles of expansion and contraction, but okay. rather an endless series of expansions and then out of little patches, as I hmm. can as best understand the papers, okay. <laughs> uh, the, it, it, these guys are not real vivid in their visual descriptions of the, what, okay. what they're modeling. But the, what, what the sense you get is that, is that you have a, an expansion and then there's a out of some out of somewhere in that existing universe, there's a patch of that universe. And out of that, then there's a, a new field that's activated, which he calls a phantom field. Okay. And for the phantom field to do work, it's got to overcome the entropy that's been built up, the disorder that's been built up of the, the first cycle of expansion. And so what Penrose does is he attributes to the phantom field properties that are associated with no known physical field. And he's been mm. critiqued by this by other really prominent people in the, in the physics okay. community. Um, and one of the things he invokes is the idea that there's a, there's a, he just invokes an unexplained new, uh, concentration of mass at just the right time activate so that the field is activated in just the right way to cause another expansion. So there's essentially without getting too much into the weeds, there's an es essentially an unexplained reduction of entropy okay. and creation of new mass energy available to do work at just the right time and in just the right way. Uh, and when you start saying just the right time and just the right way, you're talking specificity. So that's also mm. a kind of an information input. Yep. And so, yes, uh, what I've said is, yes, the cyclic conformal cosmology 
can provide an alternative to the God hypothesis, but only if you allow the phantom field to possess properties that only agents possess. In other words, the phantom field has these odd godlike properties to overcome the entropy problem mm. and to act in, in, a, in essence, the phantom field is acting like an agent. It's, it's acting at just the right, in, in just the right time, in just the right way, with an unexplained creation of new mass activated in, in, at just that right time and in the right way. So I, I think it's, it lacks physical plausibility to in the extreme. We don't know of any other yeah. physical forces that have those attributes. The only things that have that those type of attributes are agents, our minds. Interesting. So even if it were true, it wouldn't get rid of the need for a creator or a mind or an intelligence behind the universe. Well, I, I think there's a kind of a sleight of hand in that the, the okay. field that's been formulated as a theoretical entity is more like an agent than it is like any physical field we know. Got it. That's that's what I'd say. And okay. then there's there's also one other problem, Sean, and this is I found a consistent problem in cosmological models going all the way back to the uh, to, to Einstein's attempt to gerrymander his equations of general relativity to um, circumvent its implications of a dynamic expanding universe from the beginning. Um, you, you, viewers may recall that Einstein uh, formulated this thing he called the cosmological constant. Uh, mm -hmm. So his basic background, he's got a new theory of gravity general relativity. The idea of general relativity is that massive bodies will curve the space or space time around the massive body. They'll create a preferred line of trajectory in a cur uh, sort of a curved shape. Um, and it turns out that if that theory of gravity is true, and if gravity is the only force acting in the universe, then eventually all the massive bodies around other massive bodies should kind of circle in and congeal. And then you'd we'd live in a universe which was a giant black hole, but we don't live in that kind of universe. And Einstein recognizes that, so he says, well, there must be another force at work. So in addition to the inward pull of gravitation, there must be an outward push or an anti-gravity force, which he called the cosmological constant. Okay. Fair enough, but what Einstein then did to preserve the idea of, of, a, of, a, uh, of a, a static universe was he proposed that the cosmological constant would have exactly the same mm. magnitude of a force as the inward pull of gravity so that they would be the, the, the inward pull of gravity and the outward push of the cosmological constant would be equipoised. They'd be perfectly balanced. Got it. Whereas there was a huge range of other possible values that were much mm. more likely that such that you would, it was much more likely you to have a, either have an expanding or a contracted universe, not a static universe. Got it. So he, arbitrarily fine-tuned the value himself. Hmm. He got around the beginning, but he needed to invoke unexplained fine-tuning. Now, turned out those, the story of Einstein is well known. Eventually observations were made, the heavens talked back. Turns out the <laughs> universe was actually expanding. And he later said that this fudging of his cosmological constant was the greatest blunder of his life. Wow. I misquoted him in the book. I said it was the greatest uh, of his career, his career, right? No, he he actually said it was the greatest wow. blunder of his life. Okay? Wow. In any case, point is, consistently in the history of cosmology, when cosmologists have come up with models that have attempted to circumvent the problem of the beginning, okay, they have sometimes been able to do so, but only by invoking huge amounts of prior unexplained fine tuning. So the cost of circumventing the the problem of the beginning is creating a bigger problem of fine tuning. And it, it happens that that's the case with both the Penrose model and the newer mm. Steinhardt model. Uh, Penrose has okay. to invoke, a, he has to invoke a very finely tuned amount of mass energy that will be activated at the right time and in the right way. So there's a huge amount of unexplained fine tuning in his model. It does mean you get around the beginning because you've got an infinite number of cycles, but there's no explanation for where mm. that fine tuning came from. And that's an, another way of getting at the other point that I was making is that his physical field really has powers that are in our experience more associated with agency than mm. any physical field we know.